We are so excited to have Julie Hogue join us for the Meditation in Word. Julie is a member of St. Luke's. She's been a member here for about 10 years now. She lives in Sauk City with her husband, Chris, and their dogs. You may recognize Julie um, if you've ever been to a live service or if you've uh, watched any of the online services. Julie is passionate about the Red Cross blood drives and she is a volunteer for those and will often announce when some of those are coming up. And while that is not um, the focus of our talk today, we would be remiss without at least mentioning the Red Cross blood drives and Julie's passion for it. And given the circumstances that we're all living in, Julie, what are some of the things that the Red Cross is doing to keep people safe and make sure that they're comfortable and able to come in and donate blood? Well, as you can imagine, an organization like the Red Cross sort of translates to safety first. And so they follow all of the FDA protocols and then some. So anyone coming to a drive must wear a mask and get your temperature taken when you come in the door. If your temperature is too high, then you can't come in. It's, it's for the safety of everyone who's here, but it's also for the donor's safety. So if, if a donor is sick, we want them to go home and get better. Um, and we don't want to, oh, I'm just a little sick. We don't want to give sick blood to sick people. So the screening process is really stringent and they, you know, like everybody else, they observe the six foot distancing and um, just all the safety protocols with the hand sanitizer and everything. So they're really kind of going above and beyond to make sure that any donor or volunteer who comes in is perfectly safe and not in any danger of getting anything here. Wonderful, and I know St. Luke's continues to be a site for those, so for anybody interested and able, please keep your ear to the ground, keep checking the website, um, and uh, if, you're, if you're able to donate blood, they are always in need. So always. thank you for everything that you do with that. Shifting to the story that we're here to listen to from Julie, we're talking about the whole concept of Oasis. Um, Oasis has several definitions, but one includes words like something that provides refuge relief, a pleasant contrast. And sometimes it's in those moments of refuge and relief that we find ourselves needing God the most and feeling his presence the most. So I would love to hear from you if you have um, what your personal oasis is. Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it an object that you hold? Where do you go to find that relief and refuge and call to God when you need him the most? It's, it's a really good question. I spend a lot of my waking time working, and I'm working downtown, and normally, you know, under regular circumstances, I'm working with a lot of people. And I have a lot of contact with people all day, and my face is in a computer screen, and I'm in a room, and I'm sort of locked in. So my personal oasis is being able to just get outside, and I don't care if it's you know really, really cold or really, really warm. I need to get somewhere where I can just look around and think, you know, where did this water come from? Living in, in Sauk City, I've got the whole Wisconsin River at my beck and call, and there's beautiful trails all around there, and I've explored all of them now, I think, um, either bike riding on them or walking on them. And sometimes it's just really nice to um, unplug and get away and just observe what's around. I like to um, just sit on a bench and listen to the birds and try and identify what the birds are and you know, kind of put myself in their wing and think of what their day is like and you know, where are you getting your where are you getting your bird food today? And you know, did you have a nest this year? And you know, how's that going? Um, just to sort of get away from it all. When I look up and I see birds flying, I think I would give anything to be able to do that. And so to be able to just watch a bird flying and you know doing its thing. To me, that's real relaxation. Um, that's a real oasis. Um, as I look around at everything that's just nature, and I think, you know, 
it may not be what God intended for everyone to have as their own little getaway, but that's my getaway. And that's something that nobody can take away. Rivers are always gonna be there. The big valleys and hills that we have here in Wisconsin are never gonna go anywhere. So for me to unplug and just see what God has done around me is, is just my oasis. And do you find, do you like to pray during those times? Do you hum? Is there a word like you're, you know, that you try and focus on? Or what allows that time, other than the quiet and the outside, um, what allows you to actually make, make that connection with, with God? I, I do very often pray. I think about, that's when I think about my family, and that's when I think about, you know, family members that are no longer here, um, which is going to lead into another section in a little bit. Um, I will very often have, on a Sunday, I will have watched the service online. And there's usually a song that will just become an earworm in my head for that day. And I'll have that going through, I'll have that going through my mind. For some reason, um, this little heart of mine goes through my head a lot. And especially when the sun is shining, I think this is what the song is talking about, is I'm gonna let it shine. And even if it's not, the brightest day. I know that if it's if it's kind of foggy, sometimes it's sort of misty on the river, but I know that up above that is where it's bright and sunny. And that's the hope that we have, is that even though things sometimes don't seem the best, you know, this COVID period is sort of a, a, a big lesson in that. This is not how things are supposed to be but somewhere above this fog that we're in is the bright sky. And we'll get there, we'll get there. It's not an easy road so far, but these are the things that um, I think that we just have to keep faith in and just remember that eventually, you know, we're going to come out of this and um, be able to, you know, gather and talk about these things together instead of, you know, having remotes and worrying about children and, you know, how people are getting along with, without being able to be together. So. Well, and to use the, the fog metaphor, fog lifts, right? Right. It, it absolutely does. So you mentioned um, when, when you're outside and, and in nature that you sometimes think about the people in your life, your family, friends. Tell us about a person who has had a big impact on your faith life and how they did that and how they're important to you. I think I have to stick with my, my dad's mother, my grandmother. She was a very, um, she was very outspoken in her ways. Sometimes I, I think, gosh, I, I took over or I took after her maybe just a little bit too much, but you know, she, she just had this very direct way about, about being. And I can remember as a little kid, you know, every once in a while, my sister and I would go and stay with grandma. And every Sunday, we would go to church. And that was always a part of my life when, you know, my mother was a church organist and, you know, we were at church all the time. So with my parents, that, you know, was never anything that really stood out. But for some reason, it, it, it just seemed different because maybe it was because we were going to a different church. Um, it was a different religion. I was brought up Lutheran and she was Methodist. So it could have been that it was a different religion, but it opened my eyes a lot and made me realize that um, even if, it, if it's a, a different Christian faith or a different faith altogether, everyone has someone that um, they worship for if they go to a church or a synagogue or you know some temple everybody has something and I think going to um, church and talking about things like that with my grandma when I was when I was younger 
those were the things that sort of, I think, molded my my faith walk a little bit more than every single week being in church all the time because, you know, and it wasn't that we didn't want to go, you know, if I say we didn't have a choice, that wasn't what it was. I mean, obviously we were just going to be there. It's just part of our lives. And, you know, with seven kids in our family, we had it down to a science, who's going to take which kids and, you know, so, um, so that had a big part of it, of course. But if I have to pick out sort of that sparkle, that sort of, lit things for me, it would be the way my grandmother handled um, educating my, my siblings and me on how she lived her faith. And that I think is what, is what solidified it for me. So how old were you when you remember going to visit her? I was probably I was probably 12, 11 or 12, I think. Okay. It was my my mother's parents had died in a crash when I was 9, so I didn't know them really well. I do remember going to the Moravian church with my grandmother for Christmas Eve and you know, they do the candles with the red uh, with the red paper base. Okay. Um, that's just part of the Moravian tradition and every year we made the Moravian stars and and my grandma and my aunt were in the choir and you know so I saw that but that still seemed to be more of the um kind of more of the routine which is kind of how we had it when we were kids um you know like I said when when your mother is the church organist you are in the choir you are you know and and so it's I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I don't want to come across like that was a bad thing, but it became more routine than ritual. And I think going to um, the different church with a different person, going with my grandma, and then talking to her about it afterward. And boy, the first time when I was old enough, I was probably 14 or so, I remember going to church with her and she gave me a pop quiz after the about the sermon at lunch and I'm like <laughs> I passed but you know she just wanted to make sure that I was listening you know <laughs> what did you get out of it so nice but that's just part of her directness you know she just had a way of of sort of bringing that out so it's it's comforting for me to think of her and think of think of the um foundation that she helped set with that. Wonderful. Well, Julie, thank you so much for spending your time with us. We all have a faith story to share. We often have many faith stories to share, and we're just so grateful that you shared part of yours with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
strawberry. 